So that gives takes us to dispersion, which we have a bit more time to talk about. What we're going to do in this video is to expand that a little bit to understand how spread apart the data is as well. So let's just let's just think about this a little bit. Let's say I have negative 10, 0, 10, 20, and 30. Let's say that's one data set right there. And let's say the other data set is 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Now, in both, let's calculate the arithmetic mean for both of these data sets. So let's calculate the mean the mean. And when you go further on in statistics, you're going to earn, understand the difference between a population and a sample. We're assuming that this is the entire population of our data. This is the entire population of our data. So we're going to be dealing with the population mean. We're going to be dealing with, as you see, the population measures of dispersion. I know these are all fancy words. In the future, you're not going to have all of the data. You're just going to have some samples of it, and you're going to try to estimate things for the entire population. So I don't want you to worry too much about that just now, but if you are going to go further in statistics. I just want to make that clarification. Now, the population mean or the arithmetic mean of this. Twenty plus 30 over we have five data points over five. And what is this equal to that negative 10 cancels out with that 10 20 plus 30 is 50 divided by five. It's equal to 10. Now, what's the mean of this data set? Eight plus nine plus 10 plus 11 plus 12, all of that over five. And the way we could think about it, eight plus 12 is 20, nine plus 11 is another 20, so that's 40, and then we have a 50 there, add another 10. So this is, once again, is going to be 50 over five. So this has the exact same sample, or not, just let me be very close. They have the exact same population means, or if you don't want to worry about the word population or sample and all of that, they have, the, both of these data sets have the exact same arithmetic mean. When you average all these numbers and divide by five, or when you take the sum of these numbers, divide by five, you get 10. Some of these numbers divide by five, you get 10 as well. But clearly these, these sets of numbers are different. You know, if you just looked at this number, you say, oh, maybe these sets are very similar to each other. But when you look at these two data sets, one thing might pop out at you. All of these numbers are very close to 10. I mean, the furthest number here is two away from 10. 12 is only two away from 10. Here, these numbers are further away from 10. Even the closer ones are still 10 away, and then these guys are 20 away from 10. So this right here, this data set right here is more, more dispersed more disperse, right? These guys are further away from our mean than these guys are from this mean. So let's think about different ways we can measure dispersion or how far away we are from the center on average. Now, one way, this is kind of the most simple way is the range. And you won't see it used too often, but it's kind of a, a very a simple way of understanding how far is the spread between the if you think about it, so let's say we do an assessment, right? And we just want to see which student was like a super brilliant student, blah, 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 right? Or got a super good grade. And on the average, um, we say the average score or the average grade was um, C, right? The average grade was C. And suddenly someone got A or if at the university A plus, then you just really want to see in terms of the dispersion, how good is this A plus compared to the rest of the class? Makes sense. Yeah. So if you think about it that way, the analysis for your own data actually becomes a lot easier when you're using these as tools. Okay? Mm -hmm. Well, shut up now. Largest and the smallest number. And literally you take the largest number, which is 30 in our example, and from that you subtract the smallest number. So 30 minus negative 10, which is equal to 40, which tells us that the difference between the largest and the smallest number is 40. So we have a range of 40 for this data set. Here, the range is the largest number, 12, minus the smallest number, which is 8, which is equal to 
four. So here, range is actually a pretty good measure of dispersion. We say, okay, both of these guys have a mean of 10. But when I look at the range, this guy has a much larger range. So that tells me may, this is a more dispersed set. But range is always not going to tell you the whole picture. You might have two data sets with the exact same range, where still, based on how things are bunched up, it could still have very different distributions of where the numbers lie. Now, the one that you'll see used most often is called the variance. The variance. Actually, you're going to see the standard deviation in this video. That's probably what's used most often, but it has a very close relationship to the variance. So the symbol for the variance, and we're going to deal with the population variance. Once again, we're assuming that we this is all of the data for our whole population, that we're not just sampling, taking a subset of the data. So the variance, its symbol is literally this sigma, this, this, this Greek letter squared. That is the symbol for variance. And we'll see that the sigma letter actually is the symbol for standard deviation. And that is for a reason. But anyway, the definition of a variance is you literally take each of these data points, find the, find the difference between those data points and your mean, square them and then take the average of those squares. I know that sounds very complicated, but when I actually calculate it, you're going to see it's not too bad. So remember, the mean here is 10. So I take the first data point. I say, it's, let me do it over here. Let me scroll down a little bit. So I take the first data point, negative 10. From that, I'm going to subtract our mean and I'm going to square that. So I just found the difference from that first data point to the mean and squared it. And that's essentially to make it positive plus the second data point, 0 minus 10 minus the mean. This is the mean. This is that 10 right there, squared, plus 10 minus 10, squared. That's the, the middle 10 right there, plus 20 minus 10. That's the 20, squared, plus 30 minus 10, squared. So I, this is the squared differences between each number and the mean. This is the mean. This is the mean right there. That is the mean. I'm finding the difference between every data point and the mean, squaring them, summing them up, and then dividing by that number of data points. I'm taking the average of these, of these numbers, of the squared distances. So when you, say it, when you say it kind of verbally, it sounds very complicated, but you're just taking each number, how far how far, what's the difference between that, the mean, square it, take the average of those. So I have one, two, three, four, five, divide by five. So what is this going to be equal to? What is this going to be equal to? Negative 10 minus 10 is negative 20. Negative 20 squared is 400. Zero minus 10 is negative 10 squared is 100, so plus 100. 10 minus 10 squared, that's just zero squared, which is zero plus 20 minus 10 is 10 squared is 100, plus 30 minus 10, which is 20 squared is 400. All of that over five. And what do we have here? 400 plus 100 is 500, plus another 500 is 1,000. It's equal to 1,000 over five, which is equal to 200. So in this situation, our variance is going to be 200. That's our measure of dispersion there. And let's compare it to this data set over here. Let's compare it to the, the, the variance of this uh, less dispersed data set. So let me scroll over a little bit. So we have some real estate, although I'm running out. Let me, maybe I could scroll up here. There you go. Let me calculate the variance of this data set. So we already know it's mean. So it's variance of this data set is going to be equal to 8 minus 10. 8 minus 10 squared plus 9 minus 10 squared plus 10 minus 10 squared plus 11 minus 10. Let me scroll up a little bit. Squared plus 12 minus 10 squared. Remember that 10 is just the mean that we calculated. You have to calculate the mean first. Divided by, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 squared differences. So this is going to be equal to 8 minus 10 is negative 2 squared is positive 4. 9 minus 10 is negative 1 squared is positive 1. 10 minus 10 is 0 squared. You still get 0. One, 11 minus 10 is 1 squared. You get 1. 12 minus 10 is 2 squared. You get 4. 
And what is this equal to? All of that over five. This is 10 over five. So this is going to be, all right, this is 10 over five, 10 over five, which is equal to two. So the variance here, let me make sure I got that. Yes, we have 10 over five. So the variance of this less dispersed data set is a lot smaller. The variance here, the variance of this data set right here is only two. So that gave you a sense that tells you, look, this is definitely a less dispersed data set than that there. Now, the problem with the variance is you're taking these numbers, you're taking the difference between them and the mean, then you're squaring it. It kind of gives you a bit of an arbitrary number. And if you're dealing with units, let's say if these are each, you know, negative, well, let's say th these are, uh, let's say they're, they're distances. So this is negative 10 meters, zero meters, uh, 10 meters, this is eight meters, so on and so forth. Then when you square it, you get your variance in terms of meters squared. It's kind of an odd uh, set of units. So what people like to do is talk in terms of standard deviation. Standard deviation. Standard deviation, which is just the square root of the variance. It's just the square root of the variance or the square root of sigma squared. And the symbol for the standard deviation is just sigma. So now that we figured out the variance, very easy to figure out the standard deviation of both of these characters. The standard deviation of this first one up here, of this first data set, is going to be the square root of 200. Square root of 200 is what? The square root of 2 times 100, this is equal to 10 square roots of 2. That's that first data set. Now, the variance of the second data set is just going to be the square root of 2. Variance is going to be the square root of that. Sorry, the standard deviation of the second data set is just going to be the square root of its variance, which is 2, which is just 2. So the second data set has one-tenth the standard deviation as this first data set. This is 10 roots of 2. This is just the root of 2. So this is 10 times, 10 times the standard deviation. 10 times the standard deviation. And this, hopefully, will make a little bit more sense. Let's think about it. This has 10 times more the standard deviation than this. And let's remember how we calculated variance. We just took the uh, each data point, how far is we away from the mean, squared that, took the average of those. Then we took the square root, really just to make the units look nice. But the end result is we said that that first data set has 10 times the standard deviation as the second data set. So let's look at the two data sets. This has 10 times the standard deviation. 10 times the standard deviation. Standard deviation, which makes sense intuitively, right? I mean, they both have a 10 in here, but each of these guys, nine is only one away from the 10. Zero is 10 away from the 10, 10 less. Eight is only two away. This guy's 20 away. So it's 10 times on average further away. So the standard deviation, at least in my sense, is giving a much better sense of how far away on average we are from. 20, okay. Let's say we get together, we have a quiz, again, back to the assessment stuff. We have a quiz and uh, Vice Nav um, tell me at the end of the quiz, um, he comes to me and let's say um, dad or big brother, young brother, whatever it is, and he says, I got um, the highest score. I got, um, I got, let's say 85. Yeah, this my score is 85, is the highest score and everything. Then I, I say, all right, um, what's the, What's the standard deviation of this? And it's actually very close to 85. That me that gives me the impression that most of the class for this particular um, quiz, most of the class got close to what he got. It's probably only one or two questions different. And I can probably make certain conclusion that either the assessment is easy or set or everybody else was everybody else was well prepared for it. Because pretty much it's not very far from the average. Yeah. However, if everybody else got like 40 or most of the data is centered around 40 and he is getting 85. 
I'm asking him, what did you do differently? Does that make sense? So when it comes to our own data interpretation, right? Even though he uses it's like the two sets of data and then comparing the two sets of um, data that's been collected against each other from different. We're talking about even within the same sample that you've got, all right, from the population, you can't. It can help you interpret one data point from this, the remainder to show the significance of a data that you've collected. Does that make sense? Yeah. Ish? Yeah? If that makes sense, I'm more than happy. So I will see what is remaining right from here. And like I said, should be the easiest. Range is minimum from maximum. Variance leading to standard deviation calculation and the rest is graphs. So I'm gonna pause here or stop here